Hello everyone and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Gamification, episode number 12. This is Yukai Chow, gamification pioneer, international keynote speaker, occasional lecturer at Stanford University, and overall a big goofy guy. Today we're going to talk about the fourth core drive of Octalysis, ownership and possession. Ownership and possession is the core concept because you feel like you own something. You want to protect it, you want to improve it, and you want to get more. This is like collecting stamps, right? Collecting something is always a lot of fun. And when you have part of a solution, you want to have the complete solution. This is heavily seen in virtual goods related products or services, such as Farmville. When you have one horse, you want to get two horses, and then three horses, and then four horses. And then once you have that, you need to get by the stable to host the horses. And then, then you don't have enough land to have the stable, so you gotta get more land. And it gets more and more and more, and it explodes! Not really, you still have, you just keep playing. But it also relates to the slightly more abstract sense of building ownership towards something that you invest time into. For instance, if you invested a lot of time into customizing your profile, or your avatar, you start developing an attachment to it and you feel like you have ownership over it. Hey, check out my new friend here. He's like biting my arm, very happy. It's like... <laughs> ownership possession is why people want to spend a lot of time on websites that make them customize their own personal profiles or avatars because they feel ownership over it. Also, when people want to make more money, for instance, a lot of that is from the ownership and possession drive, right? Like, birdie, birdie, birdie. Oh, lots of birdie. Tiger. They don't necessarily need the money to stay alive. They just want to make more because they want to accumulate wealth. Of course, ownership and possession possibly would be one of the less intrinsic motivating core drives in Octalis. But the, the key thing here is people feel like they have ownership. When they feel like they have ownership, they are driven and they'll do a lot of things to, um, to protect it, to improve it, and it makes them care. I was never any good at math until you put a dollar sign in front of the number. Then I became a genius. As you can see, once Chris Rubino starts to interact with things that he actually owns, primarily money, the numbers and the, and the math suddenly became interesting and engaging. And that is one of the core examples of the power of ownership and possession. Hello, good sir. Are you the goose king? Why are you so goosey? Or are you not even a goose? Maybe you're a duck. What are you? A good game technique uh, within the core drive ownership and possession are collection sets. So basically, this is giving the user uh, a few pieces of a puzzle, but saying, hey, you know, you could, you know, you can complete this set by getting the other ones. And if people start caring about the few they have, they really have a desire to, again, acquire more and uh, complete their collection set. The McDonald's Monopoly game is a great example of a collection set. So McDonald's, you, you buy the kid's meal to gain parts of a collection set, you know, get certain properties. And when you collect all the properties together, especially with combos and collections, you get to redeem them for sometimes huge prize, uh, cash prizes. Um, and that keeps people engaged. Affleck. Do you want to talk to me about insurance? No? Ah. Yeah? Oh, scary, huh? And the, the interesting thing is when you're looking at a collection set, you would give people pieces of a collection and, and that the piece of itself isn't generally isn't worth anything. When you have more and more properties, you feel like, hey, I'm getting I'm really close to winning the great prize. And what happens there is you actually feel motivated to just get the parts, not even for the final reward. So that's that's amazing because when you give a user a rare part. It's only part of a reward, but they see it as a reward in itself. Like, yay, I collected one of the four rare parts in this collection set. Awesome lobster. And that does not rhyme. Actually, that's the mobster lobster. So one of the things I study a lot is the end game in terms of how to retain your veterans. If you remember your uh, 
episode uh, five, I believe. The four phases, the last one, right? How to retain your veterans. And most games, when you play, you only play, you know, for like three to eight months and you stop. But there's some games that are very long-lasting. Diablo 2, for instance, StarCraft, for instance, people played it for over 10 years until the next episode, the next one came out and uh, people became crazy for those games. So how, does, how do these games really retain users for that long? That's a lot of soup. Never mind. And for Diablo 2, it's about ownership and possession. If you take a game like Diablo, in the onboarding and scaffolding period, it's more relying on the core drives, epic meaning and calling, you know, fighting demonic forces from hell and saving the world, as well as unpredictability, unpredictability and curiosity, which is uh, learning more about the story plot, you know. But as Diablo goes into the end game, it gets taken over by the ownership and possession core drive. Basically, people want to perfecting their gear, their items, through a selection of scarcity and randomness. But whenever you kill monsters, you know, there's a small, small chance that something good will drop, right? So you go on and kill monsters over and over and over and over again, kind of like being in a casino, I guess, where, and you're waiting for the right results to come out so your gear can get better and better, you can achieve perfect gear. And that is a very strong motivation drive to play Diablo for long, long, long periods of time. It's a battle. Oh, gotta get it. Perfectly in the perfect fighting position. Now attacking, now biting. Ah, oh, going for the neck, going for the kill. Oh, got some hair up. Ow, going for the head. Ouch, that is hurt. Wow, this guy's this guy's pretty aggressive. Wow. Nature is brutal. Oh my god. So one great example is again the game Geomon that I was an advisor for. What Geomon has done is like you get to go around and capture monsters based on your environment. So if you're next to water or temperature, you can have different types of uh, monsters. And there are a collection of a four season deer. So there's the summer fire deer, there's the winter ice deer, the, you know, the fall uh, wind deer, and the spring uh, plant deer. And uh, you know, when you get one or two of those season deers, you automatically want to complete the set. You want to get all of them. It's just kind of awkward to just have one or two of the four season deers. And so people, people trade them a lot. And usually you can only get one deer every three months, right? So you have the one you got this month, the season, and then the other ones you can't capture. So everyone trades for the other three deers, uh, usually with a high value, especially the one that's, that's uh, nine months away. And so that's the power of a collection set. Now, the amazing thing about Geomon is that when it got bought by a larger company and it needed to shut down, its users all got crazy because they, had, they owned so many of these mo Geo monsters inside of the game and, they're, and they actually banded together, these 15 year old kids, they banded together and they committed $700,000 in investment in, the, in hopes to save the company, save Geomon, you know, to keep it going so that they could eventually um, keep what they worked so hard to get. And that is the power of ownership and possession. Did you know? Allowing people to customize their avatars gives them a way better sense of, of ownership. Thank you, Michael Crass. When you spend hours and hours perfecting something, you know, you feel a lot of pride in it. And whatever relates to that, you feel attachment, you want to improve it, and you want to do well in it. And this concludes the Beginner's Guide to Gamification, episode number 12. This is Yukai Chow, and I will see you guys next time.